Education TV, where we're stepping back from the brink towards a more meaningful future. With our theme verse being, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So if your ancestors were scattered via the transatlantic slave trade or the Mohammedan Arabic Islamic slave trade, then you are the children of Almighty Sunini Nanini Samandla, the mighty one of Abraham, Isaka, and Jacobi. Oh, yes, black history. The study of the Bible is black history. And so you're welcome tonight. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Share the link to everyone. And let somebody know tonight that you are connected to the show. We give him all the praise. We give him all the glory. We give him all the honor because he is due all the praise and all the honor. Oh, yes. Yeah, share the link and text a friend. And after the show, make sure you follow us on all the channels. It is on Telegram Live. It is YouTube Live, Facebook Live, and the recording is uploaded on Bantu. You are welcome tonight to the show. All praises to Almighty Sonini Nanini Samandi. We give him all the praise and all the glory. Waking up the Bantu from sea to sea. Black education. TV. Waking up the Bantu from sea to sea. Black education. TV. Okay, I want to welcome everyone tonight once more to the show, Black Re-Education TV, where we study the scriptures and remember the Bible is black history. We continue to study this word that is liberating, the word that brings deliverance to our lives. We thank our Father Almighty Sunini Nanini, the father of the Bantu people. And we thank him for all that he has done and is doing and will continue to do in the lives of his people. Our first song tonight, as usual, is We Are Bantu.
Okay, welcome once more to Telegram Live, Facebook by default from YouTube, and YouTube Live. Remember, this show is going to be uploaded to my band tube shortly after the end of it tonight. We give praise and thanks and want to. I've been in um, YouTube, you need to click the like button. Click the like button so that the show will go out. And those who are in Facebook, please share the show because there's something still happening with the Facebook feed. Don't know what it is yet. But please share the link. Let somebody know tonight that you are connected to the show. We give all praises to our Father, Almighty, Sonini Nanini.
Okay, that is our final song on this side of the show tonight. As we want to go in early into this conversation, um, and as you see the topic there, Europe, usurp, the Bantu culture and history, or the history of the Bantu and its culture to rule the world. Usurp, pretend, take over. in order to rule the world. You, you saw um, the show last night, but just before we go there, as usual, I'm gonna play that beat and that first song and take it live as usual, just before we go into the show tonight. Share the link, text a friend, click the like button. If you are in YouTube, you need to click the like button so the video will go out to your friends and, um, and loved ones. It's important that we share this message with somebody tonight, hallelujah. My glory and the lifter of my head My glory and the lifter of my head For thou, Sunini, you're the king of kings My glory and the lifter of my head 
my glory and the lifter of my head my glory and the lifter of my head for thou sunni you're the king of kings my glory and the lifter of my head We go take it life right away. My glory and the lifter of my head as we worship our Father tonight. Oh my glory and the lifter of my head. My glory and the lifter of my head. For God no evil for me. praise and the glory we give him thanks tonight hallelujah you deserve the glory
Father, we worship you every day of our lives. We praise you because you are great. You are great. You are great. You are great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the band to praise so nini na nini. Let the band to worship the name that is above every name. Let the band to bow before the name of Sunini Nanini. Let every knee bow. Let every tongue confess that Sunini Nanini, there is none like him, the creator of the entire earth. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Some say Modimo. Some say Chinike. Some say Uludamiri. Some say Tatanzambi, Mawari. We say Sunini Nanini, the father of the Bantu, who is waking his people up in these last days. He is dispelling the lies and the deceit that the nations have been involved in to be able to rule on this earth. And so tonight, we continue in our study of the words of our father as we look at how Europe usurped the Bantu history and culture to rule the world. Europe usurped the Bantu history and culture to rule the world. I know that the topic sounds very um, challenging because are you saying that Europe fabricated history so that they can be ruling in this realm? Then who are these people that have fabricated this history? Why did they have to fabricate history? You see, on this earth there can be no rulership outside of the Bantu. Anything else is fake rulership. That's why the world is in the turmoil it is in today because the wrong people are ruling. The wrong people are ruling. They know it. They know what they did to be able to sit in the seat. We saw last night them pre um, presenting themselves as children or descendants of David. Of course, they would have changed the names. See? So they took this Bantu culture and history and story from the Bantu schools, that was the source, and they twisted this history to pretend that the rulers of this earth were them. Do you get the picture? A man comes into your house and pretends that he is you and he owns everything. And the Cindy he was telling the story of the, about how the father, the man that let out his land and the people that were using his land, he would send his servants from time to time to collect the hire. And when they would come to collect the payment for the use of the land, they will beat them, they will spit on them, they will kick them, chase them away. And in the last days, he sent his own son, a biological descendant, to the land to collect the hire and to take possession of it. And they said, they that were using the land illegally, this is the heir. Come let us kill him. And the earth, the land is going to be ours. And this is the story of the Bible. And you believe that they who killed him, killed him because of you. They kill him so that they can take possession of what belonged to you. Are you getting the picture? And so tonight we continue to unveil. Why are we unveiling this? We want the Bantu people, the people that were taken from the shores of West Africa and East Africa into captivity, um, the transatlantic slave trade, and the Mohammed, Mohammedan Arabic Islamic slave trade, um, to understand that they are the chosen people, the descendants of Shem, through Abraham, Isaac, and Akobi. And that there was no princes that escaped from the Holy Land, Sub-Saharan, and came to the United Kingdom and became, began to rule on the seat of David because she or he or them were descendants of David. You see, David has a DNA. And we of course know that that's not the name. The DNA will follow you. And if you don't have the DNA, you are none of his. If you see my sons, there's something about them that reminds me of me and reminds them of me. There is some resemblance. I remember the first time I laid eyes on my uncle. 
he's late now may his soul rest in peace when i walked into the room i i made a double check because i thought i was watching at my father and my father died long before him and i was thinking how is this possible but that's what the dna does that's that's what the father's seed does it brings back for another time and keep bringing it back several times and so if those who are ruling in, in Europe has the DNA of the children of sub-Saharan then we have no questions we are not going to have any challenge to that but we know the DNA of the children of Europe the children of the Arabs and the Asians it is completely different from the children of sub-Saharan it means that for that to have taken place some fabrication of history some usurping of the position of the rightful rulers of this earth had taken place and the only way they were able to do this is because our ancestors disobeyed the commandments of almighty sunini nanini and that takes us to genesis chapter um deuteronomy chapter 28 i know people say i don't teach much on deuteronomy chapter 28 it is already fixed we know who those who went into slavery war there were no europeans in egypt as slaves to a black pharaoh never happened never happened and so tonight as we go into the study and begin to look a little closely closer to the fact that europe usurped the identity usurped the bantu history and culture to you to rule this world so they're pretending to be in the lineage of David. They're pretending to be in the lineage of Moses. They're pretending to be in the lineage of the Bantu. Why would Europe, why would Europe or Euro-Asia or the, the children on Euro-Asia continent want to usurp black identity? pretend as though they are the people why why because they were not the rulers when they came to the continent they saw civilization they saw a people who were living as the scripture says Nasinda is speaking in my father's house sub-saharan are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go there to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself. But where I am in my father's kingdom, in my father's house, sub-Saharan, there you will be also. I am not talking about Jesus. Jesus is the figment of the imagination of the Romans. It was the Romans fabricating this history. It was the British fabricating its history. The Europeans fabricating this history. Somehow the Chinese think it's their turn to fabricate this history. Why? Islam fabricated this history. Why all these people on the continent of Euro-Asia, Euro-Arab, trying to fabricate this Bantu history and project themselves as the chosen? Because they know that Sunini Nanini has made a people for himself. He has taken out, called out, selected, chosen a people for himself. And he chose that people from the lineage of Shem. That's why they're anxious to claim Shem. And then if you say anything about them claiming Shem, then they say that you are anti-Shem. You cannot be because you are carrying the DNA of Melchizedek. The DNA of Shem. Hallelujah. You see, Sunini allowed the nations to open the book of life and the other books. And when they looked into those books, they began to see the writing. And they began to understand that Sunini has a people that he has marked for himself. You can call them the royals, the chosen people, the Bantu, 
That's who they are. And so Europe set out to hide this people. Pretend that this people do not exist. Enslaved this people. All the while they knew that they were enslaving the chosen children of Abraham, Isaac, and the Kobe. They knew they were doing that. They didn't do it by mistake. It was a deliberate act. And then pretend to be those people. The word for that is called hypocrite, pretender, an actor. That's why Sunini says in the book of Revelation 3, 9, he says, I know the blasphemy of them who are pretending to be you. And are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. I repeat, I know the blasphemy of those who are pretending to be you. I mean, they put the word you there. Pretending to be you, Bantu. But they are not, but they are of the synagogue of Satan. So I will make them of the synagogue of Satan who claim to be you and are pretending hypocritically to be you. Usurped your identity. I will make them to come and to bow down before you and to know that I have chosen you. And you know when that happens, we're not going to kick them. We're not going to do that. No, we are living on a higher level. And that's where they want to bring us down. They want to bring us down to their level of hate. And thinking that when we come down to their level of hate, we will behave like them. No, when Sunini says, he will make you to come and bow down before them. And to know that he has chosen us. We are not going to kick you. That's not who we are. We are children of the Most High. Hallelujah. Also today as we in, go deeper into these studies. Sonini has got so much in store for us. Are we ready? Are we making notes? Are we downloading these videos? Are we sharing them? Are we causing, um, using them to teach others? Because this is what we need to be doing in this time. This is the good news of the kingdom. That should be spread into all the earth. Then shall the end come. It is not a spell. It is the good news. Not a good spell. And so when everybody hear this message. And Sunini will step on the scene. And of course the wicked. Will continue to be wicked. And they try to make the world so ungovernable. And so difficult to live in. That Sunini will shorten the days. And their time will come to an end. And they know they are at the end of their time. But they don't want to go down easily. They want to go down fighting. And woe unto the man that wants to fight with his creator. Woe unto the man that wants to fight with the creator of the universe. Europe usurp the Bantu history and culture to rule this world. You know of the story in Genesis chapter 10, they call the table of nations. What you might not know or remember, that the first son of Noah on this side of the flood, they call him Japheth. They call him Japheth, but some peculiar things about him we need to know. He was Noah's firstborn. He was the equivalent of Abram's firstborn. He is the equivalent of my firstborn and your firstborn. That's who Noah is. On this side of the flood, Sunini chose him to be in the place of Adam. So he had to come from the lineage of or the genealogy of Adam. And when the children of Noah messed up, Sunini selected one from the children of Noah, from the lineage of Shem, a man named Abram. And Abram had these children. And Sunini selected from his children Issachar, and from Issachar's loins, a Kobe. 
firstborn. Like I said, Japheth was the firstborn. And so what European nations did, they twisted history to pretend as though they are coming from the firstborn. Let me bring that scripture up so that you can see it. It's more in the scripture than we have said so far. More in the scripture that we have said so far. And so, Noah got these two sons. The eldest or the firstborn is Japheth. And these are the generation of Noah. Noah's first son, Japheth. Europeans in twisting history put Japheth the firstborn over European nations. They put Japheth over European nations, giving them the right and authority to rule in this realm. So you would say, oh, they are the firstborn. When you accept Japheth as head of the European nations, what you're saying that Noah passed his birthright to Japheth and Japheth passed his birthright to Gomar and Gomar passed his birthright to Ashkenaz so Ashkenaz wants to rule here. Are you getting the picture? Now, this deduction is not easy or readily seen if we read the, the Bible which is a summary of the Bantu scrolls. If we read this Bible like how they want us to read it. You know, you write a letter and then you tell the person, you, you start reading from paragraph two. And the person said, but I want to start at paragraph one. Say, no, read from paragraph two. You can go back to paragraph one later. So here we have a situation where Noah's first son, the firstborn, the one that will inherit Everything from Noah is becoming the father of the European nations. You know that this is not a true story. This is not a fact. This is the plagiarizers twisting the scriptures, resting the, the scriptures to their own destruction. Because we are destroying that fake teaching, that fake conversation whom are brothers in the Hebrew Israelite in Christianity or in Islam or in Judaism, wherever we find ourselves, we repeat as they have said it to us. Let's read this story properly now. Noah had two sons, and Japheth the elder. He became the father of dark and black, brown and black people, and his brother Shem also became the progenitor of brown and black people. And if Noah had one million sons after then, they'll become the progenitor of black and brown people. So Europeans stepped in on the scene, took the Bantu scrolls and inserted their genealogy. They saw the records, because the records were kept as to who they are. And they inserted themselves under Japheth. Gomar, Magog, Medan, that's the Arabs, Javan, that's the Greek and the Romans, Tubal, Meshach, Teres. Gomar's son, first son, Ashkenaz. This is the one that wants to rule. This is the one that from time to time tells us that we are anti-Semitic, we are against him. But he is claiming in the scriptures here that he came from Gomar. How do you come from Gomar and then conveniently claim Shem? Did you not know that all the children of the European nations listed here are Gentiles, as it says here, as you have translated? Hallelujah. So, we have this case of fabricated history to deal with. And we are going to use the evidence from the very nations to speak of how they trans. They, they um, twisted history to be able to rule. You see, every child that comes out of the loins of Abraham or Issachar and the Kobe, they are born kings. And for centuries, Europe and the other part of our family, Euro-Asia and Euro-Arabs, they have been successful 
in keeping the Bantu under them. Because the Bantu did not understand what they really did in this book. And the Bantu was reading this book as though those who handled it were being truthful. And so, in 2020, Sunini Nanini, the father of the Bantu, dismantled the lies that were being told. And so, we have been able to read from the original Bantu scrolls. The ones that cannot be doctored by European nations. But sadly, a lot of our brothers and sisters have not been able to extricate themselves from the lies that were told by Europeans as to the reasons why they have become kings and queens and ruling over the Bantu. See, the Bantu is Sunini's kings and Sunini's queens. Peter puts it this way, a royal priesthood a holy nation hallelujah and they are the rightful rulers of this earth and what we are watching tonight what we are beholding in history is Sonini's correction of that history he kept the books and he's opening the books and in the books it is written that the Bantu is the chosen seed. And so, as the Bantu began to embrace his chosenness, the nations are becoming worried because it means the rise of the children of Akobi is the demise of the children of the nations. One of the other things we never believed, even when we were in Christianity, we struggled with it. That Sunini has children here. And Satan seeded children here too. Even when we read in the book of Jude. That Cain is of that wicked one. We struggle to understand. Because we were told that Eve is the mother of all living. And Adam is. Did they say Adam too? Is the father of all living? I don't know. But Eve is not the mother of Cain. Adam is not the father of Cain. Lucifer is. And so somebody is saying, but you mean that Satan got children? Yes, Sunini has children too. Genesis in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, we are reminded in no uncertain terms that there are two seed lines here. Sunini speaking in his word says, When you read Lord God, read Sunini Nanini said unto the serpent, the devil. Lucifer, the fallen ones, the cast out ones, the cast down ones. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above all every beast of the field. Like I said, I always believe that word to be below. Upon thy belly, which is below the cattle, Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I, Sunini Nanini, will put enmity, variance, division, strife between thee and the woman, and between thy seed, offspring, genealogy. Yes, children, that seed. Yes, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed, who thy, Satan, Lucifer, the fallen seed, and her seed. It shall crush thy head, that's the correct reading there, and thou shall bruise his heel. So what you will inflict on my seed, 
through the woman and the man that I've created will be less than they will inflict on you. They will crush your head, Lucifer. This is the battle that has taken place, is taking place, has been completed in the supernatural realm, and we are seeing the mapping of exercise. And so, it is this offspring of Satan, is this seed of the fallen that has been in place by deception, by pretense, by usurping the history and culture of the children of Sunini Nanini. Hallelujah. They usurped it and have been ruling over us. But because the nature of this rule and the origin of this rule is from the fallen, it is impossible for the rulership to be righteous. It is impossible for the rulership to be holy. It is impossible for the rulership to be just because it is not the rulership of Sunini Nanini. It is a rulership by pretense, pretending that they're sitting on the seat of David, Sunini's eternal king. Hallelujah. In the video last night, you learned that Europe believes, and this is British Israelism. See the word there coming, Israelism, that they are the chosen, and that their monarch sits and rules from the seat of David, the biblical David. The Bantu David that lived in Sub-Saharan that was hiding in the caves of Maun in Botswana from King Saul. The same David that cut off the end of the skirt or the garment of King Saul who came into the caves in Maun in Botswana to hide. Later on, the temple was going to be built in the Kalahari in the area right in the area there where Maun is, in the desert there. You see, this story that was taking place on the continent in Sub-Saharan, the land is given to Abraham, was then twisted by all European nations, all Euro-Asia, all Euro-Arabs. And so, the Arabs the Asians and the Europeans from the continent of Ham, they took turns in twisting the story for their benefit. Rome got a version, they created JC. And the British got another version, they separate from Rome. And the Eastern European, who claims that he is a son of Gomar, and mistakenly think that he came from Japheth, now wants to take his position as the elder son of Gomar. He wants to rule. Notice I have not mentioned Japheth there. He is the elder son of Gomar. He wants to rule. So they all took turns to rule over the Bantu and the Bantu land. The Holy Land, Sub-Saharan. The 9.4 million square miles given to our father, Abraham, who passed it to Issachar and to Akobi. So they all were involved in changing the names of the biblical characters that they saw in the Bantu scrolls. We might never know the real names of these people, but we are connected to the spirit of these people. I, I remember when I was in Bible school where they tender age and I, I remember asking Pastor Smar, who, who, who are the people in the land of Israel? Because we were being taught about the land of Israel as being the holy land. And he told me, and I said, but 
And he said, so who is the rest of the people then? He said, everybody else is a Gentile. These are the Jews, and everybody else is a Gentile. And I said, but Pastor, when I'm reading this book, especially when I'm reading the genealogy, now my heart was so tender and open to Sunini Nanini. I said, when I'm reading this genealogy, I'm kind of feeling a connection with these people. And his dimples went in. Those who know Pastor Smart, the late great Pastor Smart, Calvary Temple Assemblies of God Church. His dimples went in and he said, I don't know. I don't know. But this is what we're told. And since then, I knew that something wasn't right, but I couldn't find it. So I was basically rebellious. I was examining things for myself and I was asking and bombarding the Bible school lecturers, Pastor Garraway, Pastor McLean, Pastor Baca, Pastor Wilson, and Pastor Bristol. You name them. You know all of them. I was bombarding them with questions all the time because I need to know. I know Pastor Gary one time, he said, um, you're asking so much questions. Take this book. Go, take it and go and read. I, I have that book there. After he died, I took the book back and the son said, no, he, my father wanted you to have this book. You keep the book. It was the last books of Eden. It's so flimsy. The pages are kind of crumbling now. And I read and I read and I read. And so I was hungry to know because this, this thing about your DNA and who you are is not just a physical appearance like your black skin, like mine. It's not just the texture of your hair or the color of your eyes. There is a connection in the spirit. There is a spiritual connection. And Europe could not have enslaved the Bantu before they have first broken his spiritual connection with Sunini Nanini. And when we are not keeping the commandments of Sunini Nanini, that spiritual connection is consistently broken. That is why when we came into Christianity, we were told very clearly up at the beginning in converts class, you don't need to keep the commandments. It's done away with. Because they knew us. The once we keep those commandments, there is an eternal covenant that Sunini Nanini, the creator of heaven and earth, made with our ancestors. And if we keep the covenant, we are rejoining that relationship that Sunini Nanini had made with Abraham, Isaac, and the Kobe. So they broke that relationship by giving us a false deity named Jesus Christ. And today, the confusion in the Hebrew Israelite situation that developed quite recently is fueling that confusion. People who don't even have never spent years in studying this book is now picking up this book and saying, Oh, we, we, are, Chris, uh, we, are, we are followers of Jesus. Do you know who Jesus is? Do you know what you are saying? You are creating a confusion in this awakening. And if you consistently do that, Sunini will move you. Look, every time you stand up and declare Jesus, you are in rebellion against Sunini Nanini. How can Jesus, the figment of the imagination of the Romans, speak is he closer? Who was speaking is he closer in the book that you read? Ele, Ele, Lama Sabatani. That is Isi Kosa. That's not Jesus' words. Jesus is European. I hear them say that if he goes to, to China, he becomes a Chinese. We ain't like that. I'll be, oh, 100 years in Europe, I'll still be Bantu. It can change. My skin is not going to change into nothing unless I bleach it. That's a false ideology that Jesus goes to China and he becomes Chinese. He goes to Korea and he becomes a Korean. He goes to Mecca and he becomes an Arab. No, it's not like that. It's in the DNA. It don't change. It don't change. It don't change. 
So if you're a follower of Jesus, leave this awakening alone. It's got nothing to do with you. Because the Messiah we are talking about, Nsindisi, which is his name in the Isikrosa language, that he spoke when he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabatini. When the angel spoke, the angel wasn't speaking English. Could you not know that? English just came lately. Which angel will be speaking English? And which angel will be speaking Hebrew, Yiddish, and German? There ain't no holy angel speaking that. And so when you begin to mount words because you think that you're not qualified because you hear a little bit about the awakening and these people waking up and, they, and you think this is Black Lives Matter or something of the sort, so you got the right to talk. When following JC, the figment of the imagination of the Romans, this is the corrupted history that was given to us. They faked the location. They faked the characters. They faked the history. They faked the culture. We have lived a fake for all these years. And they're trying to bring this story back to Hebrew and Israelite and Jew, which is the fake story. We ain't doing that crap anymore. That nonsense, we are finished with it. We rebuke that spirit. That takes us back into captivity. The ship of Jesus. So if you want to understand what has happened. Leave what you think you know behind. Those who have come to this awakening. Had to do that very thing. They had to leave all that they knew behind. I mean those. Some, some of these things will still follow us. And when we see them. We have to rebuke them. And hear the words of Nsindisi when he said it. Get thee behind me. Satan. Don't let them follow you. Don't let Jesus follow you into this awakening. Don't let the Hebrews follow you into this awakening. Don't let Israel follow you into this awakening. Don't let Jew follow you into this awakening. Don't let God of Israel follow you here. Don't let children of Israel follow you here. Don't let land of Israel follow you here. All part of the fake story. You just behold the drying up of the fake Euphrates River. And you think it's Bible prophecy. That's how deep this deception is. Last night we saw a conversation about a princess that ran away. From the Holy Land, Sub-Saharan. See, when you don't know where the Holy Land is, there ain't no white prin um, princess running from there and coming to England to become queen. Ain't nothing like that happen. But that's the fake story. When your eyes are closed and you just listen and you don't see and your understanding is void, then you don't get into this real story. You're still in the fake. And so, Europe sat down with the Bantu scrolls, which they now call Dead Sea Scrolls, and fabricated a history that brought about the demise of the Bantu civilization. When they got to the continent, just as Masindisi said, in my father's house are many mansions, castles, mansions. And kingdoms. That's what they saw when they got to the continent. Europe was in the dark ages. Suffering. I'm going to let the sister speak on that in a little while. And while they were suffering. And wanted to rise. They look around to see. How come? Are we alone suffering? So these children of Cain. The descendants of Ham. After the flood were suffering. And when they got to the continent and they behold the civilization of the Bantu people on the continent, they say, no, this is not so. Then they began to apportion names for themselves. They moved the story into their continent, into Euro-Asia, and tell us that that's the place where the children of Ashur were known as the Assyrian Empire when they changed it. Then they tell us the children of Elam. These are all children of Shem. The children of Elam now, they put them in Iran. 
Yes, the children of Japheth in the lineage of Cush, Nimrod and Babylon, they put them in Iraq. So they took all this civilization from the continent. Among the senior Negroes that were living in Negro land, along the Nigger River that they call the Niger River, they put them in Euro-Asia and began to tell the story, the Bantu story, from a European perspective. Messing up the culture, messing up the understanding of who the creator is and all of these things. And then they created the figment of the imagination of the Romans, Jesus. And they all agreed for Jesus. I understand that um, Russia is now opening its museums and is exposing the true nature of the Bantu story. That the Messiah is black. His name is not Jesus. He is not a replacement. He is not to be exchanged with Jesus. Jesus remains the figment of the imagination of the Romans. The picture painted by Michelangelo that never left the canvas on which it was painted on. This Bantu man that was walking on the continent, that was murdered by the Romans, the Greeks, and the Eastern Europeans. They murdered him and told the world that he had to die. He came to pay a price for the God who is his father. We couldn't get the father, so we did the son. And everybody believed the story because they own the means of propagating this message. They use the missionary, really the mercenaries, to spread this message wide and far and brought the very message back to the original Bantu people. And when they saw it, the elders rebelled. But Europe waited because they know with time the elders will pass on and the children will be left with a fake story. But what they did not bargain for is that this story is not just written in books, the Bantu scrolls, but it's written in the DNA. It's coded in the DNA. And they only get to see that when they opened, they were allowed to open the DNA book. And see in there that the history of the Bantu is embedded in his DNA, is embedded in the melanin that is in him. You can't separate Sunini from the body that he has created or the being that he has made. And that's what they tried in 2020. But Sunini lifted the Bantu series. It's up and it's keep rising. It is the resurrection of the Bantu. And nothing, no fake teaching can stop this rise. This is who we are. We are the sons of Sunini Nanini. Hey, first John says it to us. Now are we the sons of Sunini Nanini. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall see him, we shall be like him. Let me see if I can find that verse and read it to you. That's a lovely portion. Let, let me just get it up here. Hallelujah. We give praise and thanks. First John, chapter 3. I'm going to take you there. Hallelujah. First John, chapter 3. I'm going to read from verse number 1. Just make it big enough for everybody to see. Starting here. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father, Sunini Nanini, has bestowed upon us that we should be called, plural, the sons of Sunini Nanini. What manner of love? How, how much Sunini love the Bantu? He loves him to the point where we are called the sons of Sunini Nanini. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. I want you to listen carefully. 
Now this is not a Christian doctrine and reading. No, 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 no. Just pay attention to the words of the Father. Behold what manner of love has the Father Sunini Nanini bestowed, put on, clothed us with, that we should be called the sons, the descendants, the sons, the offspring of Sunini Nanini. Therefore, because of this, the world, therefore the world knows not, because it knew him not. They don't know Sunini Nanini. They made up a story. They don't understand who he is. They're now getting to know who Sunini is. As he had told them that he will destroy, he will bring down, Everything that exalts itself above him and above his people. And he gives them chance. But they don't want to know him. Romans says, and when they knew him or had a chance to know him, they choose not to glorify him, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish hearts became darkened. And Sunini Nanini hand them over. Give them over to uncleanness and vile affections to dishonor their bodies between themselves. Men with men, women with women, doing that which is unseemingly and receiving in themselves the recompense of the reward which was just and meet for them. He gives them over to a reprobate mind, a mind void of correction. So if you are of the nations and you feel um, sorry for the things that have happened, better give praise to Sunini that you can feel sorry. Because there are those that cannot feel sorry. Sorrows. They don't understand what it means to be on the opposite side of Sunini Nanini. They don't care. So if you feel that sorrow is a good sign. It says, therefore the world knew us not. And the reason why they don't know us is because they don't know him. We are his children. And if they don't know we are his children, they don't know him. That's what Ms. Cindy was saying to the Jews, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, the chief priests and the high priests in the book of John chapter 8. He said, how is it that you don't know me? I came from the Father, whom you say is your Father. And you don't know me. I'm your son, and you don't know me. There you are not a son. You have got a different Father. There are people here from a different Father, but pretended that they came from Adam, and they pretended that they came from Eve. Because that's the only way to hide their identity. Satan fell, was cast out. And he has offspring here. You read a little portion and then go back to the beginning of just John. So then he has taken this conversation tonight. I know when he has taken it over. He directs it in a way that he wants it to go. Look at this verse that I've just highlighted here. I'll read that and then go back at the top. This is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of Satan. Oh, you didn't read that. Let me read it again. Not as Cain, we should love one another, not as Cain, or the children of Cain, or the children of Ham, who was of the wicked one, Satan. Who murdered Abel? I put the names in there. Wherefore slew he him? Because his works, that which oozes out of him, his works were evil and Abel's was righteous. So from the beginning, there was an unrighteous seed whose name was Cain. You can spell it with C. 
or you can spell it with K. When you spell it with K, it becomes the Kenites. I'm going to share some more with you, but not yet. Eventually. Cain, who is of the wicked one? Who is the wicked one? Satan. Cain is of the wicked one. Cain is of the wicked one. And I hear somebody say, but Cain children die. Did it, Cain didn't come over the flood. No, they're here. Why are we having a conversation in John chapter 8? Why are we having a conversation in Matthew chapter 23? When Syndicy said, you are the children of those that kill the prophet. Fill ye up the measures of your fathers, you serpent, you generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? He says that Cain is of the wicked one. And then go back up. No, go back up. Behold, what manner of love hath the father Sunini Nanini bestowed upon us the man to that we should be called the sons. Like Msindasi, the sons of Sunini Nanini. Therefore the world know us not because they knew him not. Beloved, now, not tomorrow. We have always been. Now are we the sons, not son, plural, sons of Sunini Nanini. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We will be alive to see him as he is. And every man that had this in him, or confidence in him, purified himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever commits sin, transgress the law. That's why they tell us, for sin is a transgression of the law. That's why they tell us, don't keep the law so that we can break them. So that we can be in violation of the commandments of Sunini Nanini. So he can reject us. And in rejecting us, they get to perpetuate the lie that they have started. It has come to an end because there are some people on the earth that know that they are bound to. They know that they are the children of Sunini Nanini. They know that they are the chosen ones. They know that they are the called ones. You don't like that. Because they know that they descendant. They've descended from Shem. Through Arfaxen. Through Eber. Through Peleg. Through Naor. Through Tira. Through Abraham. Through Issachar. Through a Kobe, an endless genealogy of royalty. And you have decided you will fake history to hide that. But we give thanks and praise to Sunini Nanini. Let me let me break away for a little bit and share with you. I know you listened to the um the video that we were sharing last night. And you, you are at a point somewhere here. I share it from here. And this video is in the public domain. We do not own the copyright to this video. But we're making educational use of it. Let's listen in. Transferred over to Scotland and then finally over to Great Britain, when the where she then married the house of King David. And it was this dynasty that was supposedly meant to rule over all of Israel. According to British Israelism, when the kingdom of Judah fell to the Babylonians, the prophet Jeremiah secretly escaped with one of the Judean princesses named Teatefi, and he traveled with her all the way to Ireland where she then married an Irish king. The royal line of Judah therefore continued in Ireland until it was then transferred over to Scotland and then finally over to Great Britain when the thrones of Scotland and England were united. So a 
According to the theory, Queen Elizabeth is a direct descendant of the royal line of Judah and the most senior heir of the biblical King David. We, we, were, we were having that conversation. We were having that conversation last night. And you know that never happened. But this is the fabrication of history that took place. And lots of our people have bought, um, bought into some of this information knowingly or unknowingly. And this is the confusion. This is Israelism. This is what it's about. So if you're an Israelite, this is part of the teachings of the Israelites. Because the Israelites, who created the word Israel and inserted it into the Bantu schools, is living out the fictitious story that they have created. And when you wake up, you black Bantu man, African American, with your arrogance, and no, I'm calling you that because... I can call you that. You, you, you know, I look like you. I know. So you can't tell me that I'm being horrible to you. You are very arrogant. You don't want to listen to nobody else but yourself. Even when other people are telling you that you need to re-examine what you, you believe. You want to slavishly, slavishly, you're like a glorified Christian. Christianity is so embedded in you that you are living out the real Christian life. Which is, don't question nothing. Believe all things. Hope all things. There ain't no prophet Jeremiah that escaped from Babylonian captivity and brought no princes to Ireland and who became the ruling monarchy in the British Empire. It never happened. It never happened. But let's hear some more of what was believed then. Okay, okay so, so that's the theory. And like I said, it pops up from time to time on websites about royal genealogy. Many people come across the idea that the British royals are the direct descendants of the House of David and simply assume that it is true. Some even use this fact to try and connect their own family tree all the way back to Adam and Eve. But if you know anything about history, you'll know that British Israelism makes absolutely no sense. Let me tell you why. First of all, the Lost Ten Tribes were never really lost. According to what we know from archaeology, after their defeat at the hands of the Assyrians, the vast majority of the Northern Kingdom's population simply migrated south and joined the Kingdom of Judah. This is why the southern kingdom's population suddenly exploded at this point, and why the priests living in Jerusalem at that time started to compile, write, and edit what would eventually become known as the Torah, or the Pentateuch. I want to pop in there because you need to know as well, though he's telling some of the truth, some of the fake stories built into there. There ain't no Judah kingdom over there. There ain't no northern kingdom and southern kingdom over there. All that story was taking place on the continent. The southern kingdom is out, up south by South Africa side. Southern. And the northern kingdom stretches from Kenya in the east to Senegambia in the west. So it's the Bantu story is playing out in the Levant. We, we have we have settled the matter on Genesis chapter 13, verse number 1. When Abraham left Egypt, he went back south to a place where he was before he came down to the north into Egypt. So we, but this story, and this is a fake Jerusalem over here. So we're not dealing with that. So just bypass that part of the conversation. Let's go. Although the details are still being worked out, biblical scholars have known for well over 200 years now that the so-called five books of Moses were not actually written by a single author, but are rather a collection of several older documents that were edited together over time in an effort to create a unified story. And the re Exactly. They got those sources you see up there 
all the documents. These are the Bantu scrolls. And they edited them. Remove, put in what they want. They keep the basic tenets of the story, but they tailor the story to suit their purpose. Because they only know about rulership and kingdom when they came onto the continent. This is where they get it from. And they changed the Bantu school and tailored it to make a story. So the summary is what you're getting of the Bantu scroll in the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Right, those are words that are talking about the story. Don't connect with those words, connect with the story. The story is the Bantu story. And it's now told from a Euro-Asian Arab perspective. You get the picture. Those sources up there are the Bantu scrolls. They existed before the Bible. They existed before Hebrew. They existed before Latin. They existed before Greek. That's why they went out their way to tell the Bantu that he was only doing oral history. He wasn't writing. No, they got the Bantu scrolls. And they copied from there, tailored it to suit their purpose, set themselves as, up as kings. So they take King David over there, and then the priests... The priestly line went to the Pope. The priestly line went to Rome. And the kingly line stayed with um, the British Empire at one time. Rome had it as king and priest at one time. And then the, the Eastern Europeans, they were the, the, the lower level, of the low, low ranking priests at one time. And so this is a family, the family of Europe, Euro-Asia, that took possession of the Bantu schools. And at several times and points in history, they are writing the story of the Bantu. They are usurping the story of the Bantu. And they are inserting themselves as the kings, like how the Bantu story had kings. So the people who ruled us, ruled us by fake. The land they directed us to is a land by fake. The language by fake. Their God is a fake. You see, the God of Israel is different to Sunini Nanini. He's different. Not the same. Lord God, Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, different to Sunini Nanini. Elohim, El Shaddai, Adonai, different to Sunini Nanini. And this is what Christianity did, Islam did, Jewism did. Romanism did, British Israelism, um, Hebrewism, all of that did it. That's where they get it from. It's Bantu story plagiarized and retold by a people with the purpose of deceiving and ruling over the Bantu people. So here the Bantu people wake up and instead of stand up and say, no, 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 we are the chosen people. No, you want to go under Hebrew. You want to go under Israel. You want to go under Jew. You just left Christianity. You just left Islam and you want to go under again. You are not ready for rulership. Only kings rule. They don't rule from underneath. They rule from above. That's what Sanini says. If you obey me, Deuteronomy chapter 28, you will be the head. If you disobey me, you will be the tail. So if you're a Hebrew Israelite, you are looking to be at the tail still. You're telling yourself that you want to be head, but you're looking for tail. You want to go under, not above, because Sunini is righteous and his children are righteous and they will rule righteously on this earth. Then the world will know peace until the philosophy that holds one race superior and another inferior. I hear you say to me, but you are preaching the same thing. No, I'm not. You preach that wickedness. I told you when you come to bow before our feet, we're not going to kick you. But you know what you did. You put the food that you wanted us to have on the ground. You just recently made Kyrie and others wanting to bow before you. You know it's the other way around. Let's listen in some more. The reason why a unified story was needed 
had to do with the fact that what had originally been two separate kingdoms suddenly ended up becoming one kingdom, and the northern Israelite traditions had to be integrated into the southern Judahite traditions. This is a topic that I will be returning to in a series that I plan to do on who wrote the Bible. But for now, let me just say that it is clear from several textual sources that the people who lived in Judea during the Second Temple period considered themselves to be comprised of members from all 12 tribes of Israel, not just one or two. Consider this verse from Ezra chapter 6, verse 17, which says, And they sacrificed for the dedication of this temple, twelve goats, as a purification offering for all of Israel, according to the Yes, so the, tri the, the 12 tribes came out from captivity. If the kingdom of Judah, they came out from Babylon, Babylonian captivity. The kingdom in the northern kingdom, the, tw the 10 tribes in the north, they came out from Assyrian captivity in West Africa. So one came from East Africa, one came from West Africa. Who held them captive? Cousin Japheth's children and sons of Shem on the other side. All right? Ashur on, on um, West Africa. They, 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 they are on the continent. They come back and they're offering 12 goats to purify all the Bantu tribes. Not Israel. All 12 tribes. Not Israel. Remember they're on the continent. And there are no Israel on this continent. They're only Bantu here. Yeah, you never knew that they were there. Because you think Egypt was the only place on the continent. And Egypt is harm according to them. And so when you open up the rest of the continent, well, who else are you going to say is there? They want you to think that Ham is the whole continent. That's what they want you to think. They don't want you to know who they are. They are the children of Ham. And Shem and Japheth is in the one tent, Sub-Saharan and East Africa. They are there on the continent. All right, let, let's listen some more. The number of the tribes of Israel. On top of all of this, there is a total of zero sources and zero archaeological findings to indicate that any of the northerners taken captive to Assyria maintained their tribal identities after that point, or that they migrated as a group to Europe. So, in short, there were no lost tribes. And so See, what they're saying, and this is why Brother Nathaniel and some of the IUCI and some other people get it wrong. They're thinking, they're thinking on this British Israelism because they're thinking that the Bantu went into Europe as a family and were ruling European lands. It's not true. And so because Europeans wrote that history and documented in book, and now we're reading it, we say, woo woo, look, 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 we were here, we were here, we were ruling it. Sunni so gave you the richest land and a history and a culture. How do you give it up for a culture in Europe where the children of Gomar could trace the inheritance forever? Let's listen some more. Speaking, Speaking of, of Europe, the archaeological record is crystal clear on the fact that during the Bronze Age, let's say around 2000 BCE, which is at least 1000 years before the fall of the Kingdom of Israel, the Celtic peoples and the Germanic peoples were already living in northwestern Europe. And we know from modern DNA research that aside from more recent immigrants, these Bronze Age peoples are the direct ancestors of those who currently live in these same areas, and of the majority of those Europeans who went on to settle in the United States and Canada. In addition to this, there is absolutely no evidence in the archaeological record or in DNA studies to indicate that a group of people from the Middle East entered this area, replacing the previous inhabitants during or after the Iron Age which is when the so-called Lost Ten Tribes were supposedly lost. In other words, there is an archaeological and genetic continuity in Northwestern Europe that is very, very old. 
On top of all of this, we also have linguistic evidence. Linguistically, Celtic languages and Germanic languages, which include English, are part of the much larger Indo-European language family, whereas the ancient Israelites quite clearly spoke a language that was part of the Semitic language family, which also includes modern Hebrew and Arabic. There is absolutely no evidence that English in any way developed from ancient Hebrew. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, there is no history, right? There is no history that shows that there were people from the continent that moved into Europe. No people that moved, especially Bantu, moved into Europe as a company of people. See? But... You have evidence of all these European people and Arab and Asian people living in those areas. It is why the Neanderthal marker is there. They were there with Neanderthal and that wasn't very long ago. But then there's the fake history that you will find in some books that tells you that, oh, black people was ruling in Europe. Oh, no, no, they were doing this. Not as the Bantu. See? And so you get this mix-up conversation about Jews in Portugal. I'm not saying there were no Jews there. But Bantu people, when they left this place, whether it be via on the East Africa side, via the Mohammedan Arabic Islamic slave trade, or on the West African side is the transatlantic slave trade, the, those, that was done to them by Europeans. That was done to them by Europeans. So, British Israelism has filtered into the Hebrew Israelites. They even went to the point of telling us that King James was black. They're con trying to convince us that Jesus, who never even existed, the image, the, the, the portrayal of Jesus, he was European. It's not the same as the Bantu man that was walking in South Africa and all over Sub-Saharan spreading this message that Sunini will redeem his people though our ancestors were rebellious. Turning the hearts of the children back to the father. Arrested and murdered by three groups of Europeans. They were there on the continent. The Greeks were living in Grecoland in South Africa. Pontius Pilate was, Pilate was ruling on the south side of Jerusalem there in Judah. Reigning over Bantu people. And so this story that you're reading in the Bible and set up in this manner you can't you can't read it like how you want to read it you can't change Jesus and make him black you got to understand that there ain't no other royals here but the royal house of the children of Abraham through Akobi we that sit here are the real royals and those who are not real royals are reigning over us. Oh, do we want to fight them? No, we don't. No, we don't. Don't twist this story. I know the brothers in America might have their weapons and the sisters and so on. 
We don't have. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It's Sunini that is taking down this deceitful kingdom that was set up. So when you hear us speak like this, don't think that we want to do you anything. No, we're not like that. We're a holy people. We're not going to defile our hands with blood. Please. I'm fearful for my life. I don't want to be in the same room. I can't be in the same space. Disgusting thoughts. Because your thoughts are evil. And your deeds are evil. That's the first thing they say. Oh, I I'm afraid for my life, so I had to shoot. You shoot because you are evil. And you like to shed innocent blood. You lynch because you are evil. When you accept your evil behavior, then you might want to change. But if you justify it, they murdered the Bantu Messiah. And then they try to justify the murder that they have done. That we had to kill him. For you. He died for you. See, we don't kill all of you, but we just kill him alone. And now when you kill him, you're still trying to kill all of us now. you got problems. Hallelujah. Um, then there's the whole idea of the British royals being the descendants of the house of King David. That entire part of the theory hinges on a claim that a Judean princess escaped around the time of the fall of the kingdom of Judah and traveled all the way to Ireland. As you might have guessed, there is absolutely no evidence that such a thing ever occurred. In fact, the earliest mention of Teatefi is in an 1861 book by Reverend Glover. And it would appear that Glover simply made the whole story up. All of Sorry. When they got up on the land, this is a possible timeline for the fabrication of this story. When they got there and they see the wealth of that kingdom, the kingdom of Judah, and the kingdom in the north, that they tried to call the kingdom of Israel. That's the northern kingdom, from Kenya in the east to Senegambia in the west. When they saw what was existing, how the system was organized, they had nothing like that. And so they destroyed that and built on the back of that their civilization which is our civilization which they took guide from our civilization how we lived righteously but because they are not inherently righteous they couldn't be the people Hallelujah. Let's listen in some more. Don't worry, we can do this series a couple of the, uh, more times. Of the Irish manuscripts that later British Israelites offered as evidence were proven to be forgeries. And then finally, there's the elephant in the room. What's the motivation behind the whole theory anyway? Well, the whole thing is centered on the idea that white Anglo-Saxon people living in the United States and the British Commonwealth have a special God-given destiny and that they have been given a special birthright from God to the exclusion of all other groups of people. That was the conversation I was having with you. They connivingly claim, Europe, Eurasia claim, that they descend from Noah's first son, Japheth, the firstborn, is the ruler. They connivingly claim that they came from Japheth, which makes them ruler. Japheth only produced black and brown children. Shem only produced black and brown children. These children of Ham, the descendants of Cain after the flood, is claiming the identity of Noah through Shem. 
It seems as though Shem had multiple children. And, and Japheth had multiple children. One time, Gomer children, Ashkenaz, claim that they come from Shem. And another time, they come, the rest of them come from Japheth. They're mixed up. Because it is not their culture. It is not their history. They were plagiarizing it. With a low IQ level, obviously. So they never thought that a day will come where we will sit down and read the story back to them. And ask them the truth. Tell us where you come from. Are you from Japheth? Or are you from Shem? Both of them produce black and brown people. You are not black or brown. Where did you come from? You see, that's why Christianity was set up in the way that you can't question. Oh, if you question anything, so Nini will add the plagues on you. No, he said, come, let us reason together. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Because these people polluted the Bantu scrolls to put themselves in that special position. They say, a divine right to rule. A divine right. That was Japheth's right from Noah. But you are not from Noah. Noah only producing black and brown people. Who was your daddy? That's the conversation of John chapter 8. You got a different father to mine. So Hebrew Israelites, black Hebrew Israelites so-called, you need to pause. You need to stop taking this information that you see in every book as gospel or good news. Oh, they wrote it here. It must be true. This is not the biological descendants of Shem. These are not the biological descendants of Japheth. These are the children of Cain after the flood. All of Euro Asia. Go back and look at the teachings that I've done. Look the claims that they want to appropriate to themselves. I am God. And there is none else. Here he says, I will make of thee a great nation. That is the British nation. No! He's talking to the Bantu. So... Not, Not only, only is, is the, the theory, theory wrong, wrong, it's also very racist. Oregon, a state that was a hotbed of white supremacist activity in the 1930s and 40s, which is when he left his previous church and established the Worldwide Church of God. Anyway, like I said, I left British Israelism behind a long time ago and have never Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I got it, I got it, I got it. Thank you, hallelujah. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Sorry, sorry. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Thank you. Yeah, I say, um, Noah, rulership. See Noah as a king. I'm repeating myself. I, I, I had the mic off. See Noah as a king, King Noah. That's our grandfather, living in West Africa, living behind Bukino Faso, Central. And that's why Europe divided up that land. They didn't divide that land because they had nothing to do. They were hiding biblical locations. They're crossing over and creating confusion in the land. 
Like how they create borders and sections in your mind. Through education, through this, through that. They're dividing up to rule. They're not uniting to rule. They're dividing to rule. Just as how they divide the land, they divide your mind. Noah is living in West Africa, King Noah. And his two sons, King Shem and King Japheth. His King Shem is known as King Mel Melchizedek, King Priest, because he sustained his relationship with Sunini Danini and taught Abram how to have that relationship because Abram lived in the house of Shem and Noah in West Africa before he came to Sub-Saharan. When Abram came to Sub-Saharan, he was king, King Abram. His son Shem, I'm sorry, Issachar, was King Issachar. Crown Prince got married to Rebecca from West Africa and he made a Kobe and a Suel. The Suel, the younger one, a Kobe, the elder. Switch around by Josephus again to demonize. Our father, when we wake up and know that a Kobe is our father, but he's a supplanter. He taught his soul bought right. He was trading bought right for food and, and that, that kind of crap. Not in the culture. They were decimating the culture. But they somehow think they got a, a God-given right to rule. Who gave them the right to rule? They're ruling by deception. Lucifer is a deceiver. Didn't he ask, said to Masindasi, Hey, you know this, I, 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 I got these kingdoms here, I can rule them by deception. You, you want to rule with me, I, I, just bow down and worship me, you know, I'll give you all of these kingdoms. Well, these nations bow before him, Lucifer. And so they are ruling on his behalf. And to get to rule, they have to twist the Bantu story. Don't miss tomorrow night. It's going to get more bizarre. You need to understand this history so that you don't buy into this situation of you being a Hebrew or an Israelite or a Jew. This is the origin of those words. They were concocted to rule over the Bantu. And that's why you are fighting to go under them. You that are born above, from above, you want to go under. You that are from above want to go beneath. But yet you want to read Deuteronomy chapter 28. And you want to say that, oh, I am from above. You want to say, I am the head and not the tail. But you want to be a tail. You want to go under Hebrew. You want to go under Israelite. You want to go under Jew. There are those of us who are not doing that. We're bound to. We know the story. We have humbled ourselves before Sunini Nanini. And we've asked him to show us. And he is showing us. That's why we can speak the way we speak. We know in whom we believe, and we are persuaded. We have confidence in Sunini Nanini, and he has allowed us the privilege to read from the original Bantu scrolls. So we know what they did. It's in your DNA too. Let, let, let's test this. Every Hebrew Israelite listening to me that don't believe the things that I'm teaching, I'm saying, I want you to go and kneel down in your own quiet moment. Don't tell nobody what you're doing. I'm just giving you an advice. Take your compass, find the south, put it on your phone, find the south. That's where Jerusalem is. It's not in the north. The gates of hell is in the north, and the gates of heaven is in the south. Kneel down, face the south, or lie down on your face to the south, and ask Sunini. Say, creator of heaven and earth, show me who I am. Show me the truth about your word. I have inherited lies. I want to know the truth. You show me the truth. And when you get up from there, wait. Go about your normal life and wait. 
He is going to make things happen to cause you to know. Some of you will get a dream and in your dream you'll wake up saying, I'm Bantu. Some of you will wake up saying, I'm the chosen. Some of you will wake up and say, Sunini Nanini is real. He spoke to me last night. He shows me this. And, he, and you are going to know it's him because you're going to represent what he has shown you in such a way that somebody's going to say, hey, is he mad? Is he getting mad? He was never like that when he was a Christian. He was never like that when he was a Hebrew Israelite. How now is he talking that Africa is the holy land? Why is he talking like that now? I remember um, Uncle Yeshua, he said it to me. He said, I was following you all the time. I was listening to your story when you were teaching in the earlier videos that I did. All those videos are still there. When I used to talk about Yah and Yahushua, you know. He said, I was listening to you. And then suddenly you start doing Sonini Nanini. And I said, what's wrong with this guy now? He, he left this, he left this, yeah, yeah, sure, and, and I'm still there, and he's gone out to Sunini Nanini. What is he doing this for? That's when you wake up, and you ask him to show you, with all your heart, in all sincerity, all that you think you know, put it down. Say, I lay them at your feet, Sunini Nanini. I don't want to connect with this story. Show me the story. Tell me the truth about who I am and on my, my people, who they are. And when you do that, make sure you're facing the south, face Jerusalem, Ekaelami. And when you get up from there, he'll begin to show you. He's going to connect you with information that he'll be pointing you. And then you say, no. Nah. I ask him, and he's showing me. When he showed me Genesis 13:1. I couldn't believe that that was still in the book. I knew it. I was reciting it twice. But then when he said the third time, I went to read. And then the first reaction was, made, somebody put this in here now because the light turned on. Abraham left Egypt and went back south from whence he came in chapter 12. In chapter 13, he's returning from whence he came from cha in ch chapter 12. When he left Bukino Faso, the, the land of Tiro, and he journeyed south to get into Canaan's land. In south, he went down to Egypt, which is north, and then he left Egypt and he went back south. And then somebody said, oh, no, 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 he went to the Negev. The Negev is the south. The south of, e uh, the south of Israel. Hey, Sunini Nanini has nothing to do with Israel. The Bantu is not connected to God of Israel. That's the plagiarized story. Fake Euphrates River. The real one dry up already in West Africa. You saw those videos. I've done those. Go look at them. This is the story of the Bantu. I know it feels funny to you because these were questions that you had in your mind. I know the questions are being answered. You still want to doubt. And you know in your heart that these were the questions that you were asking. How can they be a virgin birth? Why am not why there is no evidence of me in this Bible after Europeans have touched it? God, they remove you. They remove you from the book. Why would they leave you there, the chosen? You don't just read where it says, Now are you the sons and the daughters of Sunini Nanini. Why are they gonna leave you there? They could put themselves there now. If they leave you then Case closed. They move you out. Completely white. Move you. Back you out. And then you are asking, why am I not in the Bible? You are not there because Europeans move you completely out. The children of Ham move you completely out. Twisted your history. And now Sunini is connecting you back with this history. And these are questions that you've been asking. And now you're getting those answers to those questions. But who is bringing that information? Little insignificant, bald head. Some of you say, why I don't have hair or why I don't have beard. I, I need to have beard and, and hair on my head to, to, to be a Hebrew Israelite. I'm not a Hebrew Israelite. I'm Bantu. And when beard is going to grow, beard will grow. When hair wants to grow, hair will grow. Is that, your, is that your criteria for being the chosen? Beard and hair. And tassels. 
Is that a criteria? Come on, children of the Most High. Don't be deceived by these nations. You got false sense of an identity. You even think it's the color of your skin. We all believed that before. But it's deeper than that. It's a spirit. It's a connection with the spirit of Sunini Nanini. It's in your DNA. It's in the melanin that he has put in you. The link that he has. He owns your body. And they hate you because you are the sons of Sunini Nanini. And you know what they want to do? They want to bring us down to the level of hate. They want us to take up guns like them. They want us to do those things. We ain't doing them things. Hey, we just want to give praises. He says, whosoever offer praise glorifies me. When we praise him, he takes care of the business with you. I remember in closing, I remember in closing, in 2019, when the brood of vipers came after me, I didn't know their purpose. But they just hated me because I was too good. Excellent teacher. Excellent. And once I speak, they know people will believe me. And so when I said that they were stealing the exams, national exam in England, they said, we're, going, we're coming for you. <laughs> we're coming for you. You know? And so <laughs> without a cause, the nations will come after you. You don't have to be afraid. Because you just you're righteous. Just stay righteous. You don't have to become unholy and descend to their level. No, you just stay righteous. It might look like you're losing. But what Sunini showed me in that period of time, I wouldn't exchange it for nothing in this life. I get to know where the holy land is. You know what privilege that is? That Sunini will take this bald head man here with no beard and show him where the holy land is and say go tell my people that the land that they hated the land that you don't want to hear about the land that you think is nothing the land that you think is for Africans the land that you think is everything else except you that's your holy land you see the riches of it he unearthed the mountain of gold in the Congo and all the cobalt and Oh yes, the uranium in Tanzania and, and the tons of gold in Uganda and the diamonds, the second largest diamond out of Botswana just recently and the gold of the diamond in um, South Africa in Zimbabwe, the land of Ophir where Solomon dug the gold from, the salt and everything that the, the, the man too needs, all the animals and, and one, one strange man is selling the buffaloes and stealing the money. He says he's a president. Cousin Cyril was doing this thing. We prayed for him several times, but he that is often reproved and hardened his heart shall be cut off suddenly and that without remedy. Those are the words of Almighty Sunini Nanini. He didn't bring no buffalo there, but he was selling buffalo and hiding the money around. Ananias and Sapphira's story. Listen, as a Bantu, you don't need to descend to the lowness. You just walk in the commandments. Keep the commandments. That's what Mcindis he said. If you love me, do like me. Keep the commandments. And my father and I, we will come and make our abode with you. And this is what has happened. A group of us are keeping the commandments. And as we are keeping the commandments, we are talking to Sunini Nanini. And we say, Father, bring these people down. So from 2019, we see the tumble from the time they trouble the children of the Mosai. The time was coming. We didn't even know the time properly. We just know that Trump signed HR 4212 in the 8th, uh, 8th or 18th of January 2018. They knew the time. And in 2020, Sunini changed everything. You know 2020 changed everything. The world has never been and will never be the same. Because the 400 years came to an end. And if you didn't know when it started, you knew when it ended. Sunini stepped on the scene and the angels are doing the bidding of Sunini Nanini now. And all we need to do in this end time is worship. And as we worship, build your throne. 
And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. Come, O Demo, and take your place. So, Nini, we enthrone you. We proclaim you as king. Standing here in the midst of us, we raise you up with our prayers. And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. Come, Sonini, and take your place. That's what we say from the depths of our hearts. And he hears us. And when we sing that and we say that, we expect it to happen. We are in the covenant. We're behaving like our father Abraham. When Sonini speaks, he believes him. And Sonini comes that for righteousness. He has confidence in the words of Sunini Nanini. And that's what we are doing. We ain't got no faith. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. We've got confidence. Whatever Sunini says, he will bring it to pass. We don't have to bring it to pass. He brings it to pass because of who he is. Hallelujah. And that's why I like to worship. 